My name is Angelina Lovalente. I am a tight net. Uh, I've been with the team for about a year now and I found my tribe. <laughs> so when I first started doing events with Titan, you really start to understand what Titan does. And once you understand how we can help our patients, it really becomes an exciting experience every time you work an event to be able to educate potential patients and people that we can help. We don't help just your gym goers and bodybuilders, but anybody who really wants to look and feel their absolute best. So once I became a sponsored affiliate, starting to do some of the larger events, we got to go to Olympia last year, a lot of the Cars and Couture events, so stepping outside of the gyms and really catering to a different clientele. And though we work hard, we play just as hard. <laughs> so we really work hard during the day, setting up the events, making sure that everything runs smooth, uh, being able to really deliver a world-class experience for everybody that we come in contact with. Uh, and then once everything is said and done, we all go out to dinner. We'll go to Dave and Buster's. We really enjoy each other's company and that's what keeps everybody as close together and supported as possible. So I feel really grateful to be a part of this team and I'm looking forward to what's next. So if you want to be a part of the Titan family, you can call or text us, find us on all social medias at, at Titan Medical or our website at www.titanmedicalcenter.com. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you why it's important for you to have a yearly wellness consultation or maybe an exam. It's really important. Let me stress that right away to you guys. The reason is, is because you want to know what's going on on the inside of your body as well as the outside of your body. Well, it's real easy to look on the outside of your body every day. Think about it. You get up out of bed, you go to the bathroom, you go to the mirror to brush your teeth maybe. You're looking at yourself in the mirror possibly, right? Or you're getting ready after you shower and you're looking at yourself. You probably look down your body. Some people apply lotion to their body, other different things. Or when they're in the shower, they're washing their body. So they usually get to see, you know, an overview of what's going on for their legs, their arms, their upper body. They might not be able to get to see their back unless they turn around and see it in the mirror, but you can generally see what's going on on the outside. So if there's a spot or a lump or something like that, you can usually see that right away and notice like, hey, that's not supposed to be there or that wasn't there the other day. And that might cause some concern and have you going to get checked up for that, right? Well, the same is true on the inside of our body. But the thing about it is, is it's really hard to see what's going on, on the inside because we don't have x-ray vision. We can't look at all our vital organs. We have no idea where some of our cholesterol levels are at. We want to look at these different things because these things really do uh, make our lifespan longer or shorter, right? Because if you have some of these debilitating diseases that are going on in the first upcoming stages, or even cancers, you want to treat it right away. You want to find it in its early stages instead of letting it just go about its business and start corrupting other things, right? Because this will cause even more health problems, maybe even cause terminal death. So by having a yearly consultation wellness exam 
or just a consultation and blood work, you can see what's really going on on the inside of the body. Now, let me tell you, you can get really extensive with diagnostics. You can get echocardiograms to check out the heart. You can do MRIs. You can do a whole bunch of different things to really check out every spot in the body and make sure that you're good to go. Now, you don't need to do this all at one time. In different stages in life, there's different things that you should be getting checked up for. And I have a previous video talking about these different tests, so check out our YouTube page. But on this, we really wanna talk about the importance of getting the blood work done and getting the right extensive blood work done for patients to be able to see what's going on and their practitioners having all this information at their fingertips and be able to make proper educated decisions about which path they wanna go on with their health because that's the main thing, your health. Without your health, you really have nothing. I say this over and over and over again because it's true, it's a fact. Okay, without your health, you're not doing anything you like to do, want to do, you're not getting to see your loved ones. I mean, your time on this planet can be shortened by that. So make sure your health is number one importance. So that should be your biggest investment, right? Outside of your family and yourself, that includes your health. So their health and your health should be number one priority to you. Because with good health, you can do anything you put your mind and heart into. Right? You could be President of the United States, you could be a movie star, you could be a professional bodybuilder, athlete, whatever you want to be, but it all starts with that general foundation of your health. Okay? And health comes in a lot of different things from mental health to sexual health, you know, to physical health. But when we talk about a you know, full wellness exam, we're talking about all the different hormones in our body, right? That's one portion. But we really want to check on the vital organs. We want to make sure our liver is good, our kidney is good, right? We want to make sure our cholesterol levels are good. Right? because this can ultimately affect our heart. Everything is connected with inside our body. There used to be a song like the neck bones connected to the uh, chin bone or whatever it was, the hip bones connected to the leg bone. This is all true. It, it's really funny, you know, you start looking back at these, these childhood memories and songs and things we used to talk about or maybe these, these statements that these old people used to say to you back then and now you're the old person and you're finding all these statements to be very, very true <laughs> and you wish you would have learned then what you know now. Um, but by doing this wellness exam and consultation and blood work, you can really see what's going on the inside. Maybe if there is a problem, you can catch it. Let me give you an example. The best example I can say is a PSA, right? And this is done on males because it's a prostate blood test and females don't have prostates. So you ladies are out and clear, but males, we do have prostates and with prostates, um, you can get cancer and prostate cancer is on the rise with men. Right? It's a big thing and we should be checking up on this. And when you hit your 40s, that's when they want you to get a finger check for your prostate. I know a lot of us guys don't want to do it, me included, okay? Hopefully they're going to come out with something and I know they're working on different testing right now where they won't have to do that. But right now that's the gold standard for us in the 40s. But previous to this or even in as we go on after that, you can check with blood work. And we have patients, literally, that come to us and want to do hormones or treatment or just want to see what's going on, on the inside. And their prostate, their PSA, comes back way over range. 4.0 is the usual standard, up to 4.0. Anything after that, you're looking at something that could possibly be going on. Now, if your prostate is over 4.0, don't get scared right away. Because some people get infections in the prostate and this can cause it to enlarge. And that's what that number will bring up and show in the blood test but it's always good to get this checked out. Now, you can go to your general practitioner and get a blood test for a PSA, or you can come to Titan Medical Center. If that's included, right, and they find that this is high, you should be possibly going to a specialist like a urologist. They can really break down things for you and really you know, do some other things as far as testing wise, like biopsies. Some guys need to get a biopsy of their prostate to make sure that there's not cancer in there because cancer can spread and cancer can get really out of hand. Some people need to get their prostates removed in general. These are just some of the different things that we've seen. We've helped people identify prostate cancer in the early stages, then went to the urologist, got it fixed, and are in the clear now. And they don't have to worry about any of the other negative health benefits that this could have caused them if they wait or they didn't even check. And a lot of these guys weren't checking to see if the prostate was good or bad. It just popped up. And that's the thing. You can't see your prostate, guys. You don't know if it's good or bad. The only way that you can see this is through blood testing. And that's just one example. 
And when we talk about hormones, we talk about all these different things that regulate our body in all these different ways and directions. It can mess with our metabolism, our mood, our sleep patterns, right? Um, the way that we think, depression, all these different things are determined by hormones. So we wanna make sure those are in check too as well. It's all about an ecosystem in our body. We wanna make sure everything is harmonically balanced throughout. Not one thing overdone and the other less you're not really taken care of. That's not gonna work for you, I promise you guys. And the example I give for a real life scenario is if you're rolling on a car that has three regular tires and you got a donut tire, which is like that little spare skinny tire, and you're going 90 miles an hour, those other tires are probably gonna hold up. That donut's only supposed to be going 45 uh, miles per hour and going like 20 miles tops. And you're going all the way to Miami from Tampa, which is four and a half hours. You're probably not gonna make it. You're putting super stress on that one area and it's probably not gonna hold up, okay? So with that, just make sure, you know, you wanna make sure things are balanced harmonically. The other thing after that, when we look at sugar levels, these, this is another main test you should be looking at, a hemoglobin A1C. Now, usually general practitioners look at a comprehensive metabolic panel, which covers like liver, kidneys, electrolytes, and it also will cover like maybe glucose levels. Now, that's a fasting glucose level of that day, right then and there, what's going on. A hemoglobin A1C is a three month average of your blood sugar levels. And this will tell you whether you're fasting or not, if you're pre-diabetic, diabetic, you know, what stage you're at, and what you should really be doing at that point. You know that, hey, listen, this is a big red flag. Your doctor will see this is a big red flag. What do we need to correct this and to adjust it? Because this is something that keeps going on and on. If you have high blood sugar, you don't know. You might get woozy here and there. There might be some issues that you might deal with and not even think about your blood sugar levels and blow it off, right? But if it continuously keeps going on, this can damage the kidneys, putting you in Kidney disease, right? You don't want that because that's gonna take you down another path of unhealthy living and uh, not so good living, right? As far as quality of life concerns. The other portion is, is cellular deterioration with high sugar levels in the bloodstream. This kills cells in the body. You don't want that, right? Because the more cells are dying off, the shorter your lifespan is gonna be. And the other things that can happen in there, you can start losing limbs and eyes and all types of different things. And I know from experience, I've had guys that I grew up with literally lose their eyes and have to get glass replacement eyeballs um, because of their sugar levels. And they knew they were diabetic. They were supposed to be taking medication and laying off sugary foods and sugar in general. They didn't change their healthy lifestyle into healthy lifestyle habits. And it took him down, he's, he's gone now, but I mean, he went through a, a lot of hell and a lot of suffering through losing his eye. And then I think he lost like a couple toes in that. It's something you don't wanna do, right? And I'm not trying to scare you guys, but I want you guys to be aware of these different things that could hurt you in the long run. And you won't even know it until it's too late. So, if I haven't stressed it enough, get a yearly wellness consultation. Get extensive blood work. You need something extensive checking all the vital organs, a full cholesterol panel, full thyroid panel, all the hormones, and you can even go with hemoglobin A1C, the three month sugar level check, and then a bunch, much more different things that can tell you what's going on inside your body and making sure you're prepared and educated with what you can do and what your options are gonna be at that point and stage in your life. If something is bad and everything is great, bam, keep on rocking and rolling. Continue with a healthy lifestyle. But if you find some things that are wrong, you might have time to change things, correct things, and get yourself back on track to feeling better, looking better, and performing better. So that's just a little advice from me. John, to you guys, we appreciate you guys at Type Medical Center listening, supporting us, and I hope this will help you guys live a better, fuller, and healthier life. Thanks, guys.
If you're looking to boost your immune system, try Titan Medical Center's Tri-Immunity Therapy with vitamin C, zinc, and glutathione. Vitamin C is well known for its immune boosting power. It plays an integral role in the manufacturing and performance of our white blood cells. It's also an antioxidant, which means it can reverse oxidative stress, essentially the aging process of the body by removing toxins. Vitamin C boosts the immune system as well as overall health. Zinc is great for the immune system, skin, health, and wound healing. The body's immune system needs zinc to do its job. It's considered an essential nutrient, meaning your body can't produce it or store it. It's also required for numerous processes in your body, including gene expression, enzymatic reactions, immune function, protein and DNA synthesis, growth and development. Glutathione is the mother of all antioxidants. It's contained within our bodies and acts as a buffer for harmful toxins, chemicals, or damaged cells that are introduced. The body is capable of producing its own glutathione, which keeps the body healthy and functioning properly. It can be depleted quickly if a person is sick, has been working out hard, drinking or smoking, which can lead to more illnesses. Glutathione can also help with workout recovery and those leading active lifestyles. If you're interested in more information, call or text Titan Medical Center today at 727-389-3220 or visit us online at titanmedicalcenter.com. What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Sharice. And guess what? We're back with another Cupid's Corner. Oh my goodness. That's right. Every week. Every Sunday. My beautiful wife, Sharice. <laughs> we'll be coming at you guys with new tricks, tips, and things that will hopefully entice, enhance, and revitalize that relationship of yours. Um, even if you're not in a relationship, you still want to get these tips, tricks, and things that will definitely benefit your future relationship. Yep. So you have a successful one and uh, hopefully live long lives together happy. with your partner. Happy. Happy. Cozy. That'd be good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this week it's actually, uh, we're gonna divert a little bit from that, but it will definitely help a relationship if you listen to me or listen to us. So it's Mother's Day. That's right. Gotta love the mothers out there because without our mothers, wouldn't be here. Yep. Right? Yep, we held you. You owe us your whole entire soul. So, you know, Majority of people out there have good relationship with their mothers out there. I've only met a, a couple of people, I guess, or there's only a handful of you that might not have a good relationship with their mothers, right? And this could be an issue because of something that happened before in the past. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, there's good people out there and there's bad people out there. But the majority, I think, of mothers are good. And you know, you know what? Either way, they gave you life. So you gotta love them to some extent, right? Now, mothers, there's two types. There's the mother that gave you birth and maybe you're in a relationship or you're married to the mother of your child, okay? That could be your wife, that could be your girlfriend, some girl, baby mama, whatever it is. <laughs> but she's still a mother. And if she's a mother to your child, you gotta respect her and love her. Even if you don't like her, you know, there are people out there that don't like their baby mamas. Or There's or most, children, most of them. <laughs> right? But you at least gotta show them some respect and you gotta show them some love because they brought your treasure into the world. And that's your baby or your child, okay? so. With Mother's Day, you know, there's a lot of different things you guys can do for mothers out there. Now me, I like to revert back to the old school things of flowers. Maybe flowers. You can't go wrong with flowers. Dinner. You, you really can't go wrong and with dinner. flowers, dinner, like right? it's usually brunch or something, you know? Yeah, you know, and, uh, and sharing the time with the mother. So if you have, you know, your wife and then you have your mother's, her mother and your mother, you want to take them all together, that's, that's a really good way to do it. So here is about that. Uh-oh. Right. She don't want her life so, taken from No, it's not life. even that, actually. So I just, and we won't even name names or we won't pick, <laughs> we won't even pick out mothers that, you know, might act this way. Uh-oh. However, uh -oh. you know, what, what really is the true debate, right? So the true debate, does it come down to, right? Let's uh -huh. just say, 
there's a bunch of mothers, right? Because right. John has a mom. Yeah. I have a mom. Yeah. You know, um, now I'm a mom, right? right? So, you know, you have to think like, okay, well, what if, you know, I want to do something with just Peter and John mm -hmm. and it's just me, right? And, you know, is this where you just, you know, send some flowers to your mom and, you know, be like, happy Mother's Day? Is this where, you know, you just call your mom be like, happy Mother's Day? Because now you're a mother. So technically now it's your Mother's Day. Now you still still want to say happy Mother's Day to your mom, but is it really when once you become a mom, right? Here's the question. Once you become a mother of the child, right? Yeah. Is it really their Mother's Day at that point, right? Because you still, that's their, their moms. I get it, right? Let's not. I'm gonna, still your mom, right? However, I mean, this this does not call always call for a mother gathering, you know, for, for all the mothers to come around and all the mothers get presents, you know, because now you're a mom. And the reason I bring this up, again, I won't bring any you know names into it, but you know, I've had a situation where you know a friend, <laughs> friend, um, a friend of mine, you know. They both have moms, you know, a husband, wife, mm -hmm. and now she's a mom and she wants to do what she wants to do with the kid on Mother's Day. And it is what it is. And of course, the other one of the moms of the, you know, husband, wife is now mad because they're not doing something with them for Mother's Day. So I feel like there's a fine line between that. Right. Because then once you become a mother, Mother's Day is for you because you're a mom. Right. Because I mean. I, what do you think? I think in a, in a perfect world, you know, you can get everybody together for Mother's Day and you guys can celebrate together. Um, I think that, you know, yes, you can set aside that time for you and your inner family per se, right? That core family, you, your your husband or, you know, partner and then your child and you have that time, right? But then you set aside some other time where you guys can all get together, if that's possible. Like, you guys are all in the same state and location. Yeah, that's guys always fun too, right? Like that. But the, I, listen, if, if you're a mom out there, right? Because now I'm thinking, oh shoot. I'm like, so I'm a mom now. And then I'm like, when Peter has a baby with somebody, then she's gonna want her Mother's Day. And I'm gonna be like, excuse me, I'm your mom too. So yeah, I'm not being left out. And then what if she's like, well, it's my Mother's Day. Like, we're going out to dinner, have a nice one. Here's some balloons. I'm like, I'd be sad, you know? So, I mean, I feel like, uh, kind of but I'm trying to, though. but I still want to respect, you should still respect the the wife, what they want to do. But that's right? what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I mean. I feel, this has been a fine line for years. You can set some side of time for both, I think. I, I literally, I I've, think. I've heard this scenario so many times, it's not even funny. Because, let's get, I mean, listen, Fox is the exact same thing, right? I'm a father. But my dad's my father, right? And, and we usually take him out. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, listen, I, I think women take this a little more serious than guys do, right? To a certain extent, of, this is my day. You know, this is for all the mothers out there, right? It's not just one single mother. <laughs> exactly. It's for all the mothers. Yeah, listen to, enjoy. to John. Listen to John. So I think that you know, I think that you know, if if you can't, you get along with your mother-in-law or your mother, you know, maybe set a little bit, to, like go out for a bunch for like a half an hour, 45 minutes. But the rest of the day is yours. Like you don't have plans, you know, maybe spend a little bit of time because think about it, right? The whole point is to spend time with your kid on Mother's Day, right? Well, yeah, but you're their kid. Right. You see what I'm right. saying? Right, there, there's a circle of there, life. There's definitely a circle the of circle life circle of life. And uh, the generations it's are like there. Like Lion so, King. So, you know, think about what your mom, right? You're, you're, you think about your mom and your mom's like, you know, on Mother's Day. Then what does she have for Mother's Day? Because both of her kids have Children, wives, right. and, and they're both mothers, right. right? So does that mean that she gets just just she's out now? I know, right? And that's not cool. This has been happening for a while, though. Cool. Now listen, you don't even have I mean, to take your mother out or get them together. You can get them something. But if you, yes, you establish like, listen, Happy Mother's Day. I want to get you some really nice roses, and mom. I love you. I call Thank you. you. I talk to you. Life. I love you. Right? That could, that could definitely be good. Good enough. Um, but if you really want to make their day, dude, you, you take them out and you see them. And the only reason I say this now is because as we get older, especially now, um, you know, time is valuable. And you yeah. don't know how Tomorrow long people are going to be around. And it's not. It's not. And, you know, people just don't wake up the next day sometimes or something happens out there. So you really never know, you know, is that going to be the last Miller's Day that you're going to spend with them? And that's really how you should treat that. You know, life is so precious. Uh, and at that point, you know, your mom's your mom, dude. You know, are you going to be really sad when she's gone? Mm -hmm. You better take the time to spend it with her now while she's here. And you can love her and talk to her, even if you are a mom. 
right? Because that experience is what's going to mold you to a certain extent. Well, the memories. You're going to be a mom, right? Yeah, yeah, the memories. You know, you can collect the memories too. So I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. I think yeah. it's a good thing. Now, there are people out there that do not get along with their mother-in-laws or maybe even their moms <laughs> anymore. So, you know, you're going to have to work story, through yeah. that different story. situation or something. Send scenario. the flowers. There's so many flower companies, guys. But what I would say about that, is even if you don't like your mother-in-law or your mother per se for some reason, shape, or form, make make the extension out there. Send you know, extend the olive tree, uh, per se. Be the better, bigger, and better person, and send them something. Mm-hmm. Send them something. At that point, what are they gonna say? Oh, I can't believe this person just got this. I hate this one. Or at least you did it, right? You can look yourself in the mirror, but like, listen, I'm a good person. I did what I was supposed to do. And that's it. And you can sleep all at night, look at yourself in the mirror, and you don't got to be a crab ass. Okay? <laughs> Listen, that's all, the whole to. point is to make sure that your mother knows that you appreciate your mother. That's right. That's, that's right. what it comes down to. That's right. So It's not all about, you know, whatever. And if you want to do something on your Mother's Day, and after that, you talk to your mother, it is what it is. And if she don't respect that, it is I'm be like, happy Mother's Day, Mom. I'm going to call his mom, happy Mother's Day. And then guess what? I'm be like, John, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> I want to go to sleep. That is my gift for Mother's Day. I'm going to bed. I'm going to take my blanket and put it right over my head. <laughs> <laughs> easy enough, right? That's Isn't that an easy Day. one? Man, that's the cheapest Mother's Day you've got. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, be original on Mother's Day, too, if you can. You know, uh, Do something special for your mom and for the mother of your child, too, as well. Whether you like them or don't like them, you should definitely extend that courtesy out to them. Show them some love and show them appreciation for bringing either you in the world or your baby or child in the world too as well. Because like I said, that's your biggest treasure. Two of your biggest treasures, your life and their life. Yep. That's a big thing. Big that, ones. You know, it takes a lot, man. Nine months. Ugh. I won't Nine that. months. So you just owe me, Peter. <laughs> you owe me. You owe me the rest of your life. So, uh, yeah, so when you're married and you have kids too, right? This is the mother, my mother's day, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, guys, so been a great show with you guys. I hope you guys enjoy Mother's Day out there. Yeah, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. You guys do deserve it. Celebrate, that. enjoy yourself. Uh, you know, without you guys, life would not be here as we speak. Yeah. So, lots of love to you guys. Make sure you guys are watching Cupid's Corner every Sunday at 11 a.m. on ABC. If you don't get to watch it live, make sure you DVR it. And if you miss that too, don't worry. Just go over to YouTube, type in Type Medical Center, and you can see this show and all the other great shows of Cupid's Corner with all our great information that we give you guys week in and week out. So we'll see you guys next week, 11 a.m. I'll see you then.